In the world of generative AI, prompt engineering is a very important topic. In this module, we are going to look at prompt engineering. So here you can see the parts that make this up. We're going to go through the intro to prompt engineering in this part. And then we're going to look specifically at patterns. We're going to look at two very important patterns, such as few shot and a chain of thought. And then we're going to look at a whole bunch of different patterns. Patterns are just templates, sort of, for these prompts that you are using. These are very much the form that the input data going in for training was in. So if you if you match sort of the format that training data is in, that the large language model is trained on in the first place, then you're going to probably get better results. So prompt engineering, this is really dealing with making the best prompt possible. And this is very much an iterative process. This entire module of the course, there are really no coding examples. So when what we're going to look at to make use of it is I suggest you go to just a large language model, in particular, the GPT models that we're focusing on this course. But if you go to platform open AI, this, I use this a lot. This basically gives you a place where you can put your system prompt in, you can control some of the key capabilities here, and then you can also, you can just basically put your prompt in. So we'll be using that. You can certainly, if you like, just go to the more, this is more the programmer entrance to, uh, to OpenAI, and this is more the consumer or the, the end user one. So these are some specific suggestions that I give you for how to create effective prompts. First of all, provide specific and complete information. If you're not giving it complete enough information, you're, it, the bias is going to show through. And I'll show you some harmless examples of bias. If I tell it, write a program, so if I tell it, write a program that asks you to guess a number between 10 and 1, and then gives you clues until you guess it, I'm not telling it a lot here. Do I want an Android app? Do I want, what, what, do, what do I want? Well, I'm going to tell it, and it's just going to guess. And look at that. It writes it in Python. So, and you'll also notice, too, when you run this in the, the, the chat playground, you get no formatting. And believe me, this is actually awesome because sometimes when I am having it format something for me, I want to just copy and paste this markdown code directly into where it's where it's going. So this this is actually a feature in in my book. But it, notice it wrote it in Python. Um, this is a very common beginner program. This is probably one of the first programs I ever wrote back in the 80s, yeah, I'm old, but I wrote it in Commodore 64 BASIC. And what amazes me is Commodore 64 is an ancient computer, but it can write it. No, write this in Commodore 64 BASIC. BASIC, beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code. And amazingly, I mean, this, this is like it speaks ancient languages. <laughs> um, that's literally what it looked like. I mean, um, uh, line, number, line number basic. Gotta love it. So give it specific information. If you, if you don't tell it what to do, it's, it's just going to make it up. And each time you go through, it's going to make it up different. So when you're having to generate code, always tell it the name of the function. Tell it the name of the parameters, these things. We talked about this a little bit when we were going through code generation. This is important. If you're, ha if you're having it to, to extract data, uh, get do things for you, always explain what to do in an exception situation. If it can't find something, it will interpolate it. It'll guess it. It'll make something up. It'll hallucinate. So always, always, always tell it what to do. So here I tell it, and by the way, I, I work for uh, the life insurance industry. So I, a lot of my examples will be life insurance related. List the top five life insurance providers in the United States 
based on customer satisfaction. If current data is unavailable, please provide the most recent statistics so you're telling it what to do. Like if you have this big unstructured block of data and you want to extract a birth date from it, if you don't tell it what to do, it's gonna look at all the other information there. Like for example, if you are telling it to program in Commodore 64 Basic. That says something, sadly, about your, about your age. But, but seriously, that's what it'll do. It'll look at other information and try to guess what, what the age is. And then we get all mad at it and say, you're hallucinating. But th that's what models did for years. They would interpolate data. We wanted it to make things up. This is another one that I, I use a lot. You can always ask for suggestions on your prompt. This is how you say, okay, ChatGPT help me to help you. So I, I have here a, a basic prompt. So if I, if I do this and you put that last part on there, do you have any suggestions? And you can, you can take this and put it right into the playground. I always like to clear first so that it's not, just from a cognitive load standpoint, I don't want it thinking about what I was doing before. So I'm gonna run this and it says certainly to draft a more detailed and persuasive email. So it, it, um, it tells you how to refine. This refined prompt will help you generate more comprehensive. I would say the key thing on these are always just specify as much as you can. If you're having it write an email for you, specify what your reply is, specify who you are, specify what the company is, all these things, specify, specify, specify. And certainly concerns of bias, just like I said. Anytime you have it summarized, so if you give it this big block of text and you say summarize this down, it's gonna throw away information. That is very much bias. How does it know what to, how does it know what is unimportant? So that is, that is certainly something for bias there. ChatGPT, it's often made of bias here where I say, square image of a doctor. And it's going to give me a square image of a doctor. We'll see, the, the, the thing that they always make a big deal out of is what race does it choose for the doctor? So this is, that is, that is textbook example of a, a, a believe that's a Caucasian. Uh, so it's, it's going to basically do what, what the most of its, of its training data did. I could say you can get more precise, middle-aged Indian female. I mean, so you specify the race, you specify the gender, you specify exactly what you want, and then its biases are not going to show through. And there you have it. So this is... So this is the introduction to prompt engineering. We're gonna certainly go a lot further. We're gonna look at patterns and we're gonna look at chain of thought and few shot. Not flu shot, but few shot. So thank you for watching the video and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of this class or other projects that I am working on with artificial intelligence. Thank you very much.